Of all the gods and beasts in Greek mythology, none were more fearsome than this primordial monster. Born of Earth and Hell itself, Typhon was without doubt the most dangerous challenger to the rule of Olympus that Zeus and his allies ever had to face. After all the titans and giants who waged war for supremacy of the cosmos, Typhon alone came closest to toppling the Olympian order. This is his story, one of such incredible proportions that Epic doesn't even come close to describing it, a story of such magnitude that Zeus himself nearly broke the world trying to defeat him, and a story which according to legend may not even be over. Watch on and you may just discover where to find the indomitable Typhon today. In the aftermath of the Great Titanomachy, where Zeus supplanted Cronus for rule of the universe, a second battle would be fought. This was the Gigantomachy, the war between the newly crowned Olympians and the giants, children of Gaia. This too was an epic war fought across the known world, involving mountains being thrown at each other, Poseidon breaking off chunks of whole islands as weapons, and the plain of Phlegra bombarded with Toebeleon Repaisi, the raining down of arrows from Heracles' bow. Zeus, Heracles and the Olympians once again won, but Gaia was not finished. In anger at her children's death and defeat, she once more looked to bear a son who could finally topple Zeus in retribution. So she went to the darkest of all divine spirits, Tartarus, Hell himself, who with Gaia sired a new breed of monster. Not Titan, not Giant, but something else entirely. This was Typhon, born and raised in Taanthra Kilikia, the caves of Cilicia in southern Turkey. He spent his formative years underground in the care of the Chthonic entity Python, or Puthorn, namesake of the later species of serpent who was himself a great snake-like monster and another child of Gaia. Typhon's physical features were truly terrifying, and as he grew there would soon be no cave in the universe that could have housed him. Writers as varied as Pindar, Apollodorus, Hesiod, Ovid, Nonus, all took great care to ensure their descriptions of him were as graphic and terrible as possible. <laughs> His size and sheer might far outstripped all the children of the earth, and their daughter in a clean road, acted on megagos and the promoter, the state of Eric Hay, men handled upon the road. From his waist up, his torso took a human shape of such a prodigious size as he knew over every mountain. Here, the Philippe Lactis came from Astrogon Epsau and his head often brushed the very stars. Back to the next day, Hecaton Kefalite Raconto, and from each of his hands sprung up the heads of a hundred snakes. Had there upon their own spear as they then recuperated their days to keep no, while below his waist writhed an impossible number of vipers. He was said to have prosopa pordalion, leopard heads, blosurai comai leonton, bristling lion's manes, and the boeas keraiae, the horns of bulls, all across his body, snakes ever winding and twisting their way around and across them. From his body sprung many wings, flames flashed from his eyes, and from his mouth, Hephaistoio cronus denotatus anapempe would stream a torrent of the most terrible Hephaistian fire. The closest thing I could possibly compare him to is Peter Jackson's Balrog, but on a scale far, far greater. Before he went on to fulfil his mother's wishes, Typhon, believe it or not, found a soulmate, and there was only one being who could tame him, 
This was Echidna, the half-nymph, half-viper daughter of Cato, an ancient primordial beastess of the sea. Typhon and Echidna are famous in Greek mythology for giving birth to just about every major monster you could think of. Cerberus, the Hydra, Scylla, the Sphinx, the Nemean Lion, the list goes on. But Typhon's destiny was not to live with Echidna and their offspring as one big, monstrous, happy family, no. He and his uncontrollable rage were to have other plans. It was Gaia who gave the order to kick things off. At a nod from her, Typhon arose from the Cilician cave. At the same time, Zeus was up to his usual tricks and while in bed with a mortal woman, had left his thunderbolts carelessly in a cavern. Typhon headed there first to take them, and with them in his many hands he began his war against Olympus. Crashing over the land, devouring all beasts in his way, and belching out fire and poison, he marched onwards towards the seat of power. He did not go unopposed though. Selene, Titan of the Moon, defiantly tried to beat him back, as did Orion the Hunter, the Pleiades and the Winds, but all failed and fell back with many battle scars. As Aeschylus said it, pass in Hosanteste Theois, he withstood all the gods. Typhon continued into the oceans, the leviathans dwelling within, retreating from his serpentine legs in fear. Typhon would reach deep into the waters, grab the chariots of Poseidon, hurling these and rocks and islands at Olympus directly. Hail, rest of mine, O oh my hands, he thundered out. Dios hoi god a raza te, ut men na cosmos eis a te, suma caressi, kai ato eni ponu nuku pops a te, heo no hea. Crush the home of Zeus, shake the foundations of the cosmos and the gods within it. Break the bolts of ordered divine Olympus. The gods were so terrified that some legends say they transformed into animals and fled all the way to Egypt. Hesiod had this to say. Kai nu ken epleto ergom emekhanon emati keino. Kai ken hoget ne toisi kai atna toisin anaxen. E me er se pater andron te teonte. And truly, an unavoidable disaster would have happened on that day, and he would have reigned over both mankind and the divine, had not the father of men and gods been quick to see it coming. Under the divine feet of the immortal king, great Olympus shook as he stood. Zeus, even without his weapons, faced Typhon, with Nike, goddess of victory, at his side. But as we'll soon see, the myth is far from over, and many writers disagreed with Hesiod, and another hero would step up to the mark. But I digress. Zeus leapt down from Olympus to face the monster, and they clashed mightily. When Typhon raised the bolts of Zeus against their master, they refused to comply. His many hands struggled to hold them, and they missed their targets as he threw them. Zeus reclaimed them in the fray, and the two fought on. Their battle scorched the earth, drained the seas, and shook the world. Zeus with his thunderbolts and the adamantine sickle of his father Kronos, Typhon with his unending strength and ferocity. I won't quote it here, but I urge you to read Hesiod's account of the battle in the Theogony, it's incredible. For an alternative, slightly more comical, but epic nonetheless account, read Nonus' Dionysiaca. Now Zeus certainly had the upper hand, and would have at this point defeated Typhon, but the monster managed to take the sickle from him, and essentially hamstrung the king of the gods, and tore out the sinews from his arms and legs, disabling him. He carried Zeus off and imprisoned him in the cave where he was born, with Delphini, another serpent monster relation, to guard him and his sinews. Zeus had been defeated. It was now up to a revolutionary few to save the cosmos and restore order, lest Typhon forever remain lord of all things. Of all the gods, it was Pan who saved the world. He devised a plan, either with Cadmus, who I have a short video on linked top right, or Hermes. 
You see, Typhon, for all his monstrous ways, was a lover of music, so either Cadmus or Hermes began playing the pipes, and Typhon overheard them, coming over to sit and listen, utterly entranced. Nonus claims that Cadmus convinces him to give him Zeus's sinews on the promise that with them, he can use them as strings on a lyre to play music the likes of which the world has never heard before. Others say that Pan played the music, and when Typhon was so bewitched that his focus was entirely in the music, Cadmus or Hermes stole the sinews and returned them to Zeus. And when they did, oh boy. Zeus, Zeus's strength renewed, riding a chariot and winged horses from heaven, suddenly began hurling thunderbolts at Typhon, chasing him to the mountain called Isa. Typhon fled from Zeus's barrage, looking for anything that could help him against the onslaught. He sought out the fates in an attempt to use their power against Zeus, but they were not on his side. Offering him fruits that they said would make him stronger, he ate them, but was resultantly weakened instead. Hopping down off his chariot, Zeus defeated him with such ease that the mountains were drenched in Typhon's blood, which is why there is a mountain even today in the area called Mount Hymus, meaning Blood Mountain. Zeus ended the battle by blasting Typhon into the ground and setting upon him an entire volcanic mountain. Some say he was cast into Tartarus, but to me it makes more sense that he not be imprisoned inside his own father, not to mention the fact that it sounds a lot cooler to think that a volcano spitting fire could be Typhon. Now most accounts say the volcano in question is Etna, but another contender is the volcanic mountain on the island of Ischia, which I've actually had the pleasure of going to before. And sadly, I was not aware of this part of the myth at the time, else I'd have obviously gone into the volcano in search of Typhon. Anyway, that's the story of the monster who came closer than any being, mortal, immortal, primordial, to defeating Zeus. Mythology would have us believe it impossible, but of course we do know one guy who did what Typhon couldn't. Kratos, who really did get his revenge. And incidentally came across Typhon in the game, and gave him a good battering fun stuff. If you made it this far in the video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all those supporting the channel, leaving kind comments and helpful suggestions. And if you could spare some more and would like to help me improve the quality of this channel with better editing and recording equipment, then by all means consider heading over to my Patreon page, linked in the description, where you can see clips of videos in progress, offer more helpful insights to make my videos more accurate, or even see your own idea come to life. Again, Massive thank you to you all.